Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and guesting for policy.net.nz. We're doing a series of interviews with party leaders and finance spokespeople ahead of the election. We've just spoken to Rodney Hyde from Epsom, the MP for Epsom, who's also the head of the ACT Party. And we asked him what, is, what he thinks should be done with both the uh, health system and the education system. You mentioned vouchers for schools. How would that work? Well, it's quite a simple policy, actually, uh, but it has a dramatic impact. It's a bit like our tax power rights bill. It's a simple policy that uh, changes behaviour and changes performance. So it simply means that, you know, my son might be going to a state school. That's fine. At the present, the state school gets the money from the government. But if I wanted to move my son to a private school or to an independent school, then the money would follow the child. So what happens now is... If I choose to send my son to a private school, I have to pay twice. I'm paying for the state school in my taxes, and I'm paying for the private school in my fees. What we would do is not fund the school, but fund the child and the child's education. As long as they're going to a school that's sort of properly uh, registered and up to speed, you could do that. Wouldn't everyone then say, I want to send my kids to you know, Auckland Grammar or, or um, wherever, and you'd... you'd, you'd um you'd have a huge movement of kids all around the place? Well, it would say a lot about our state school system if they did, wouldn't it? If everyone wants to, if everyone's so dissatisfied with the state school system they want to move, then I think we need our policy fast because it's performing so badly. And let's imagine they all wanted to move. Well, they wouldn't all want to go to Auckland Grammar because, A, they couldn't fit there, but what you'd see is like any other business, you'd see an expansion of supply I'm assuming your viewers are literate on these things, a bit more difficult in a, in a public meeting, because um, the schools would come to them. You know, we have a rationing process because it's state run, and an elitist uh, process because it's state run. And um, as soon as parents were empowered through the voucher or what I call a scholarship, actually the state school sector would have to lift its game. Well, they would lose pupils, but then that's how it should be. If we're valuing education, let's make the kids important, not the teachers and the school buildings and the schools and the Ministry of Education and the politicians. Let's make the kids important. But more particularly, and this is why it's important to me, um, let's have a diversity of educational approach. I, I just am not a believer in the one-size-fits-all for education. You know, as I wander around, I see... You know, your Auckland Grammar Schools, it's my electorate. I've got a school called Mind Alive, which is a sort of an anarchical school with wonderful results, but it wouldn't suit every kid. Um, I took part in a pantomime in a school of the performing arts. I loved it because the kids get dropped off there at 8 o'clock. They do dance, singing. And why shouldn't we have that? And why shouldn't we, why should we lock um, poor people, low-income people, into schools where we wouldn't like to send our kids, but they're locked into that, because they can't afford a more expensive home. Why not fund the kids and actually have decent schools? Wouldn't um, a move to a voucher system um, sharply reduce the property prices of those um, houses around the, the, the preferred schools at the moment under the zoning system? Well, I'm very anxious about this because I'm, I represent Epsom. And the key point is, is that you just leave zoning in place. So zoning, if you like, exists. It's a fact. It's a policy. It's a policy for the state schools. So um, private or independent schools don't need to be zoned. Um, so I just leave the zoning in place. So people can be assured they can get into their neighbourhood state school, but if they choose to go to a private school, they can. I don't understand uh, how that would work. If zoning was still in place, how could you choose to go to another school if you went because in the zone? the zone doesn't apply if you go to a private school. Grammar would still be zoned. Um, Epsom Girls Grammar would still be zoned. But uh, why would you zone a private school? It doesn't need to be. So that gets uh, around that issue and provides comfort for the good people of Epsom. What about the, um, the who are very important? Oh, they're the most important people <laughs> in the world. That's right. One of them is wonderful, too. Including me. I'm in the mm. Epsom electorate as well. Um, uh, You've got to do big right. <laughs> Yes. Uh, what about the health system? Could you see a voucher system working for the health system too? Sure, similar thing. 
and um, it's tougher because you're talking about an insurance market. The good thing about the education sector is it's it's easier to operate because you know, as you basically spend the money, um, you're getting the service you know, day in and day out. When you look at health, our concern there is is that you know we're not using the health system each day unless we're sick or hurt. And uh, what does government do for us? Well, essentially, it provides us with insurance. So it says if you do get sick or you do get hurt, there'll be a health system there to look after you. Now, <laughs> the mistake that we've made, when you look at it, is to say, well, in order to provide that, we need to run it. So you have the politicians and the bureaucrats running the health system and not very well. And of course, um, because it's not run very well and because it's not priced, it makes it in inefficient, but also it means that people queue up, can't get in. And you say, well, that's not very satisfactory. So how would you do it that would be smarter? Well, ideally what you'd do is you'd have an insurance-based scheme because that's what government's providing for. It's providing me um, a promise, albeit not very well kept, that if I get sick or hurt, there'll be a health system there to look after me. We could do that through a proper insurance scheme, and we could allow our hospitals to be run more efficiently and more onto it as a private sector, with prices driving them. So who would pay the insurance premiums? Well, again, ideally, uh, you would have it that we would pay it ourselves, and the government would be, if you like, the top up for people that were short of money and on a low income. So that you could, rather than having people give their money to the government, the government provides them a health system, you could just say, well, okay, let's have people keep more of their own money, uh, take out insurance. If they haven't got sufficient money, we'll provide it for them. It's not an easy policy uh, to implement because. Um, we basically, there are 3% of people that are probably using the health system and we know pretty certainly who they are and so um, the risk factors all kick in in terms of trying to provide an equitable system. So I don't downplay uh, the toughness of that policy but you ask me about it and conceptually that's what you'd be doing. You'd be making greater use of the private sector and providing some proper people some proper assurance about the cover that they have. With an insurance system though, there's a problem in that um, even though you have prices, the price isn't paid by the person who's buying the surface up front, it's paid by the insurer. And in the States, where you have a more insurance type system, you've seen an incredible blowout in costs and you don't actually have a close relationship between um, who's deciding what service to use and the person who's paying the price, which some would say destroys the um, benefit of a market-based system. That's right. And you also tend to have government regulation coming in there heavy and screwing it up because the insurance companies have better information, more incentive to get it right than the government regulators. Again, I don't diminish how tough this is, but it's quite good to think about, well, where would you be trying to head to? And then you look at where we are in New Zealand and you say, well, what steps can we take to get better there? So the steps that you can take to get better there are more use of uh, the private health sector through proper contracting and um, second of all, uh, the greater use of providing people with an opportunity to take out health insurance to cover themselves. Again, um, the problems that you identify can be dealt with, but they're not easy. Just um, 